The following chapter contains description of murder and violence. Journey to the West, an audio drama series. The Addendum, Part Two. We spoke of Xuanzang, who received his master's words and pretended to only be a mendicant monk, as he set out for Jiangzhou. It happened that Liu Hong was away for official matters, and it was heavenly destined that mother and son should reunite. Xuanzang came all the way to the gate of the residence to beg for alms. Lady Yin, at the time, was lost in deep thought inside the residence. In a dream from the night before, she saw a chipped moon becoming full again. She thought to herself, "My husband was murdered by this criminal." And my son was abandoned into the river. Should someone adopt him? By my calculation, he should be eighteen now. Maybe, just maybe, heaven will let us meet again today. Who knows? As she was muttering to herself, she suddenly heard someone reciting scriptures from outside the residence, yelling, "Arms, psalms!" The lady came out to ask. Where did you come from? Xuanzang answered. This humble cleric is a disciple of Elder Fa Ming from the Golden Hill Temple. The lady said, "If you are a disciple of the Elder of Golden Hill Temple, please come in and take a seat." She then offered Xuanzang a vegetarian meal. Having observed his movements and speech, she felt he was just like her husband. The lady made sure no one else was around before asking in private. Young monk, did you leave the family at a young age, or did you do so later in life? What is your name, and do you have parents? Xuanzang answered, "I didn't leave the family at a young age, nor did I do so later in life. My story is about injustices enormous as the skies." An emery deep as the seas. My father was beaten to death, and my mother was taken by a criminal. My master, Elder Fa Ming, told me to find my mother in the prefect residence of Jiangzhou. The lady asked, "What is your mother's last name?" Xuanzang answered, "My mother's last name is Yin, and her first name is Wen Jiao." My father's last name is Chen, and his name is Guang Rei. My nickname is Jiang Liu, and my religious name is Xuanzang. The lady said, "I am Wen Jiao, but what proof do you have?" Hearing that she was his mother, Xuanzang dropped to his knees and wailed loudly. If mother wouldn't believe me, I have the blood letter and blouse as proof. Wen Jiao took the items into her own hands to check. They were indeed genuine. As mother and son held each other in a teary embrace, she said, "My dear child, do leave quickly." Xuanzang said, "Eighteen years have passed before I finally knew my birth parents. I am only seeing you, mother, today. How could I leave?" The lady said. My son, you shall depart this instant. If that murderer Liu comes back, he surely would harm your life. I shall feign illness tomorrow and tell him that I promise to donate a hundred pairs of shoes to the monks. That will be why I need to make a trip to your temple to fulfill the wish. When that happens, I have something to tell you. Xuanzang followed her words, and left. After seeing her son, the lady's heart was mixed with both joy and worry. Suddenly, she became ill, bedridden, and refused to eat or drink. Liu Hong returned and asked why. The lady answered, "When I was young, I once made a promise to donate one hundred pairs of shoes to monks. Five days ago, I dreamt of a young monk who held a sharp knife, requesting the shoes." Since then, I haven't been feeling so well," Liu Hong said. 
If it's only something so small, why didn't you tell me earlier? He therefore summoned his subordinates and ordered every household in Jiangzhou to produce one pair of shoes and one pair of socks. Everything must be prepared within five days. The people obeyed and did what they were ordered to do. Then the lady asked Liu Hong, "Now that the shoes have been made." What temples are around where I can go fulfill my wish? Liu Hong answered, "In Jiangzhou, there is the Golden Hill Temple, and Jiao Shan Si, the Jiao Hill Temple. You can decide which one to go to." The lady said, "I've long heard the Golden Hill Temple is a good temple. I shall go there." Liu Hong then arranged a boat for the trip. The lady brought no one along except for a trusted servant. After going on board, the boatman pushed the boat away and headed for the Golden Hill Temple. We speak of Xuanzang, who returned to see Elder Fa Ming and told him everything that took place. The elder was delighted. The next day, a servant girl arrived to tell them that her mistress was coming to the temple to fulfill her promise. All the monks went out to welcome her. The lady came straight through the front gate and paid her respect to Bodhisattva. She then presented her offerings and had the servant girl put everything on a plate. Having arrived at the religious hall, she faithfully offered incense as elder farming when distributing the items to all the monks. Seeing that the monks had dispersed and the religious hall now empty, Xuanzang came forward and knelt down before the lady. The lady told him to take off his shoes and socks, so she could have a look. And indeed, he was missing a little toe on the left foot. The two again held each other in tears before thanking the elder for raising the boy. Farming said, "This reunion between the two of you could be leaked to the evil culprit. You shall hurry back now to avoid any trouble." The lady said, "My son." Here is a fragrant bracelet. Head in the northwest direction of Hongzhou, and go for about one thousand and five hundred li. You will arrive at a place called the Ten Thousand Blossom Market. My mother-in-law, Madame Zhang, was left there back then. She is your father's birth mother. I will write another letter for you to bring along. Go straight into the palace city of the Tang ruler, and to the left of the Golden Horse. Lives Prime Minister Yin Kaishan. He is your maternal grandfather. Give my letter to your grandfather and tell him to report this to the Emperor. Have troops sent here to arrest the criminal and avenge your father. Only then can your mother be safely rescued. I dare not linger for long now. I fear the evil man will blame me for returning late. Xuanzang wailed as separation was becoming heart wrenching. Before she left. The lady again instructed him, "My dear son, remember everything I told you. Leave immediately and do not delay." Then she left the temple and returned to the boat. Xuanzang went back to the temple in tears and told his master everything. He departed right away and went straight for Hongzhou. Having arrived at the Ten Thousand Blossom Market, he asked the hostel owner Liu Xiaoer. Many years ago, a guest by the name of Chen left an old woman in the care of your business. How is she now? Liu Xiaoer replied, "She used to live in my hostel. Then she lost her sight and owed me several years' worth of rent. She now resides in an abandoned potter kiln by the south gate and makes a living by begging on the streets. It's been a long time since that guest left, and there hasn't been any news. I wonder why." Xuanzang heard this and rushed to the abandoned potter kiln by the south gate, where he found his grandmother. The old woman said, "You sound just like my son Chen Guangrui." Xuanzang explained, "I am not Chen Guangrui, but his son. Lady Wen Jiao is my mother." The old woman asked, "Why didn't your parents come?" Xuanzang answered. My father was beaten to death by bandits, and my mother was taken by force to be the bandits' wife. The old woman asked, "How 
did you learn to find me here? Xuan Zhang answered, My mother instructed me to find you, my grandmother. She has a letter here along with a fragrant bracelet. The old woman accepted the items and burst into tears, saying, My son was here because of his accomplishment and fame. I honestly thought he had betrayed his morrows and abandoned his family. Who could have thought that he was murdered? I'm glad heaven was compassionate enough to save my son's child, and now my grandson has come to see me. Shen Zhang asked, Grandmother, how did your eyes go blind? The old woman answered, I long for your father, missing him every day. He never came, so I cried until my eyes became blurry. Xuanzang went out the entrance and prayed to heaven, saying, Have pity on Xuanzang, who is eighteen but has yet avenged his parents. Today, by my mother's order, I have come to find my grandmother. If heaven would so compassionately notice my sincerity, please help my grandmother regain her sight. After the prayer, Xuanzang went back inside the kiln and began licking his grandmother's eyes. Within moments, her eyes were licked open and her sight has returned. The old woman peeped at the young monk and said, You are indeed my grandson. You are the spitting image of my son Guangrui. She was both happy and sad. Xuanzang then took her out of the kiln and again returned to Liu Xiaoer's hostel. He rented a room for his grandmother to live in and gave her some allowance, saying, I shall return within a little over a month. After saying farewell to his grandmother, he headed to the capital. At the east street of the palace city, he found the residence of Prime Minister Yin. Xuanzang said to the gatekeeper, This humble monk is a relative. I have come to visit the Prime Minister. The gatekeeper reported back to the Prime Minister, who said, I have no monk for a relative. His wife said, Last night, I dreamed of my daughter Man Tang Jiao returning home. Could it be that our son-in-law has a letter for us? The Prime Minister then invited the young monk into the living room. The young monk saw the minister and his wife and dropped to the floor in tears. He took out a letter from his chest and handed it to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister opened it up, read it from the beginning, and burst into tears. His wife asked, My dear, what is the matter? The Prime Minister said, This monk, it's our grandson. Our son-in-law Chen Guangrui was murdered, and Man Tang Jiao was taken as wife by the criminal. His wife heard this and also started crying. The Prime Minister said, Do not worry, my dear. I shall report this to His Majesty tomorrow morning. I will personally command the troops to avenge our son-in-law. The next morning, Prime Minister Yin entered court and reported to the Tang Emperor. Your subject's son-in-law, the Zhuangyuan by the name of Chen Guangrui, was heading to Jiangzhou for his new post with his family when he was murdered by a boatman named Liu Hong. Liu took my daughter as his wife and stole Guangrui's identity. He has been in office for many years. This certainly is no ordinary matter. I beg your majesty to send troops immediately to get rid of this bandit. The Tang Emperor was outraged and instantly deployed 60,000 imperial soldiers to be commanded by Prime Minister Yin. The Prime Minister left with an edict and made a roll call for the troops at their barracks before heading straight to Jiangzhou. They traveled in the day and rested at night. As stars fell and birds flew by, they found themselves already in Jiangzhou. Prime Minister Yin's troops all camped on the northern bank. Overnight, a messenger with a golden tablet indicating the highest level of urgency was sent to inform the deputies of Jiangzhou. 
The Prime Minister told him everything and asked for military assistance to cross the river. And so before dawn broke, they had surrounded Liu Hong's residence. Liu Hong was still in his dreams when he heard the shot of a fire cannon, followed by gongs and drums beating together. The soldiers fought their way into the private quarters. Before Liu Hong could do anything, he was already seized. The Prime Minister released a military order to have Liu Hong and his accomplices tied up and sent to the execution ground. Afterwards, the troops returned to their camps outside the city. The Prime Minister himself came straight into the living room of the residence and asked the lady to come see him. The lady was about to go out, but was too ashamed to see her father. So she grabbed a rope and was about to hang herself. Xuanzang sensed something was wrong and rushed into the manor, just in time to save her from killing herself. On his knees, he said to his mother, Grandfather and I have led troops here to avenge my father's death. Now the criminal has been arrested. Why would you rather kill yourself? If mother died, how could your son live? The prime minister also entered the room to talk her out of it. The lady said, I heard that a woman must follow one man to her death. I was already heartbroken to see my husband murdered by criminals. How could I so shamelessly submit to them? It was only because I was pregnant that I had to tolerate all the shame and live on. Luckily, my son has grown up now, and my elderly father has brought troops to avenge us. As a daughter, how could I even face you? The only thing I should do is repay my husband with my life. The Prime Minister said, My child, this isn't a matter of you changing your mind due to financial conditions. You had no choice. What shame could there be? As father and daughter embraced in tears, Xuanzang also couldn't stop sobbing. Wiping away tears, the Prime Minister said, No more worries, you two. I have arrested the evil criminal now. Let's go punish him. They soon headed to the execution ground. Coincidentally, other officials in Jiangzhou had sent patrols to arrest the river bandit named Li Biao, whom they brought over just as they arrived. The Prime Minister was overjoyed. He ordered the two criminals Liu Hong and Li Biao be taken out and hit with 100 strikes by the rod. Sworn statements were taken as they confessed the motives and process of their gruesome murder of Chen Guangrei many years ago. Li Biao was first pinned to a wooden donkey, a device of torture used to publicly shame the convicted, then taken to the open market. There, he would be cut a thousand times before being decapitated and his head hung from above. As for Liu Hong, he would be brought to the Hong River crossing point, where he murdered Chen Guangrei back in the day. The Prime Minister, the Lady, and Xuan Zhang all came to the river bank. Looking up into the skies, they held a memorial before gouging out Liu Hong's heart and liver alive. They used his organs as offerings for Guangrei, and also burned a written eulogy. As the three cried towards the river, the river residents had already been disturbed. A patrolling Ye Cha handed the written eulogy to the Dragon King. The Dragon King read it and immediately sent Marshal Soft Shell Turtle to invite Guangrei inside. When he arrived, the Dragon King said, Dear Sir, congratulations, congratulations. We now have your wife, your son, and your father-in-law all holding a memorial for you by the river. I shall send you back to the mortal world now. I would like to also present you with one compliant pearl, two plate-rolling pearls, ten pieces of mermaid gauze, and one jade belt decorated with pearls. You can reunite with your wife and son on this very day. Guangrei thanked him repeatedly before the Dragon King ordered a Ye Cha to go to the estuary with him so he can return to life. The Ye Cha did what they had been told. We speak of Lady Yin, who cried for her husband's death before attempting to jump into the water too. Xuanzang panicked and went out of his way to pull her back. 
As they were struggling, they suddenly noticed a dead body floating onto the surface. As it came closer to the shore, the lady hurried forward to have a better look. Recognizing it was indeed the corpse of her husband, she burst into tears and began wailing loudly. Everyone else gathered around to have a look too. And as they watched, Guang Rei began stretching his limbs and moving his body. Suddenly, he could stand and sit. The crowd was shocked beyond words. Guang Rei then opened his eyes to find Lady Yin and his father-in-law, Prime Minister Yin, along with a young monk crying next to them. He asked, Why are you all here? The lady answered, Because you were murdered by a bandit, and I gave birth to this son later. Fortunately, the elder of the Golden Hill Temple raised him. When he grew up, he found me, so I told him to find his grandfather. When my father learned of this, he reported to his majesty. Troops were brought here and caught the culprit. Just now, we were taking out his heart and liver as sacrifice for your open-air memorial, my dear husband. How did you come back to life? Guang Rei answered, It's all thanks to that golden carp we bought and released when we stay at the Ten Thousand Blossom Market back in the day. Who could have thought that the carp was the dragon king of this river? When the evil criminal pushed me into the water, he was the one who saved me. Just now, he sent me back to life after giving me gifts. They are still with me now. I never could have thought that you gave birth to this son of ours and had my father-in-law avenge me. What happy ending this is, after all the suffering we've been through. Nothing could be better than this. When the officials learned of the news, they all came to congratulate them. The Prime Minister right away arranged a banquet to thank all the relevant officials. And before long, the troops have left. Next up, they arrived at the Ten Thousand Blossom Market, where the Prime Minister again ordered everyone to make camp. Guang Rei, along with Xuan Zhang, came to Liu's hostel to find Grandmother. The old woman had a dream the night before of a withered tree blossoming as magpies chirped noisily at the back of the house. She was just thinking to herself, Could it be that my grandson has arrived? Before she was finished, Guang Rei and his son both appeared outside the door. The young monk pointed and said, Isn't that my grandmother? Seeing his mother, Guang Rei hurriedly came to his knees. Mother and son held a teary embrace as they shared with each other everything that took place. After paying Xiao'er's hostel, they returned to see the Prime Minister, who ordered everyone to set out immediately. And with a comfortable carriage, carrying grandmother and the lady, they all returned to the capital. Back in the Prime Minister's residence, Guang Rei, along with the lady, the grandmother, and Xuan Zhang, came to meet the Prime Minister's wife. She was beyond pleased and ordered the servants to prepare a huge banquet as celebration. The Prime Minister said, This banquet can be named the Feast of Reunion. Truly, the whole family rejoiced. The next day during morning court, Prime Minister Yin informed the Tang Emperor of everything that took place. He also suggested that Guang Rei's talents could be put to better use. The Tang Emperor agreed and appointed Chen E to be an official scholar who would be present at court and help run the country. Xuan Zhang, on the other hand, had his mind solely on religion, so he was sent to Hongfu Si, or Infinite Blessing Temple, for cultivation. In the end, Lady Yin ended her life in grace, and Xuan Zhang was left to repay his master farming in Golden Hill Temple on his own. We do not know what will happen later. Please wait until the next chapter.